I'm just gonna do a super quick video on how to brush your long-coated dog at home with the stuff you'll generally have at home. So not in a salon environment and not with salon tools and equipment. Um, <laughs> gonna start by saying, please excuse the noise in the background. I've got six dogs and the other five are currently chewing on bullhorns and playing. So there's gonna be quite a lot of noise. This is Nico, my miniature poodle. I pre-brushed one leg so you can see what you're aiming for with wool coats um, like Bichon's poodles or crosses it should be nice and straight and fluffy this is his unbrushed leg Nico you're fine good boy um, and as you can see the difference is quite obvious as to which one I have and haven't brushed good boy I'm going to be using just a basic slicker brush today um, because I think this is predominantly what people have at home um, this is just one you can get from a pet shop we stock similar um, in our shop in Aberystwyth but you can also get them on Amazon and online for those of you that can't get out and maybe don't have them. First things first if you're using a slicker brush make sure that you're using it safely and you're not going to hurt your dog because the last thing you want to do is give them what we call brush burn where you've gone over the same area either too many times and caused irritation to the skin or if you cause actual scratches by digging the pins in. So you want to make sure none of the pins are bent and facing the wrong way. This one I never ever use it, so it is in pretty good condition. Um, and then if you're unsure, use your arm and practice how to do it so that you're not hurting yourself. So, good boy Nix, you're fine. He is currently sat on top of a dog crate. Don't know if you can see it here. Um, simply because he's used to being at the salon, he's used to being up on a grooming table. So if he's up on a surface rather than on the floor or on a bed or on the chair where he likes to sleep he's going to associate this with behaving with standing still and with being groomed if you take your dog to a groomer regularly the same thing should apply and it will make life much easier you're not going to hurt your back quite as much either if they're up on something so we're going to take a front leg i'm going to use a conditioning dog spray as well on the coat just to make sure i'm not going to be doing any damage to it Again, this isn't the one I use in the salon, but it's really good just for pet owners to have at home in the cupboard so that when you're doing basic dog coat care, you know that you're putting goodness into the coat and not just brushing through and damaging the hair. Slicker brush. I'm holding right at the toes. Don't know if you can see them here. He's really hairy, but his feet are here. So I'm holding just literally the front of his toes quite gently. Um, and I'm gonna start brushing from the toe. We find quite a lot of dogs come in with knotty feet because people are holding the leg like this, brushing and then not getting here. The other areas that tend to be forgotten are the inside of the leg here and up in the armpit. We do clip out armpits um, in the salon. I think every groomer pretty much does simply because it's an area that's quite sensitive for brushing. You don't want to be ripping any knots out and ha not having hair there just makes life easier. So we're going to start from here, we're going to go against the grain of the coat and we're going to do what is called line brushing on Nico because his coat is so thick and it's good to get into the habit of doing it even if your dog isn't crazy hairy just so that if you ever do grow them out, Nico good boy you're fine, so if you ever do grow them out you're already in the habit of correct brushing techniques. So what that basically means is I'm separating the coat so I can see the root and see the skin and I am brushing it a section at a time so I can see skin I'm starting right at the root and we are brushing it section by section now Nico is obviously pretty used to having all of this done he comes to grooming competitions with me he's in the bath um, and having a brush out and a groom every week so he knows what this is all about if your dog is less keen on it we tend to suggest doing a leg a day or 10 minutes at a time over the space of a day so you can get around the whole dog and it doesn't stress them out. Obviously, you can give them lots of treats, um, lots of praise. Try not to turn it into too much of a game just because if they're used to being able to chew the brush or chew your hand, as a lot of clients come in and tell us, oh, it's fine, he loves being brushed, he just likes to chew your hand. That's not the most helpful thing um, for them to be doing in a salon particularly if we're handling scissors and blades and other sharp objects it's not safe for them to be trying to mouth us at the same time as we're doing that this is a super super quick demo so if you've got any questions afterwards just 
give me a message or put a comment up if you're unsure what tools to use on your dog um, drop me a picture and I'll be able to advise and if I can't advise I'll make sure I can find someone who can I'm always told I'm cat handed when I'm holding equipment by the way so don't take how I'm holding stuff as gospel so that is the whole front of his leg done and line brushed now I can do it nice and quick with him because I know that he's not free and I know that he's nicely groomed so then move to the inside of the leg good boy and we're going to do the same thing Nico good boy so his dew claw is here so make sure you're careful of that I have seen people brushing their dogs who have forgotten there's a dew claw and they've got the comb um, or the brush caught around the dew claw and they're frantically trying to rip it out thinking it's a knot and obviously that causes the dog quite a lot of pain and discomfort so please just be careful of any lumps and bumps it's a really good way of getting to know your dog's body and to make sure that you know if they've got anything unusual or anything that's changed or if they're sensitive in any areas also make sure you do the back of the leg doing the same technique so against the grain section by section now doing it this way how i'm doing it and not sectioning it off just means that you're going to miss getting down to the root if they're this thick coated so again what you need to do is section it off do it a little bit at a time i tend to find doing the underside of the leg easier this way just so that every time i've done a section i can pull the next section down with the brush instead of faffing around and trying to use two hands section for the hair ideally what you're then going to do is use a metal comb and go with the root with the root with the coat growth just to double check for any tangles i don't have a metal comb at home at the minute so i'm just using a plastic one which is useless don't use plastic combs they're no good good boy neeks and that is a very very quick way of how to brush legs Oi!